The planet of Fenris is a world of ice and fire, dominated by extremes of climate and an erratic orbit that makes it one of the most turbulent worlds inhabited by man. For the most part, its surface is covered by water, and its tiny land masses are no more than islands scattered sparsely upon the mighty sea. The one and only sizeable continent, Asaheim, lies at the North Pole. Fenris is situated far to the galactic north of Earth at the edge of the regions known as the Eye of Terror, from which come the raiders and despoilers of the foul Chaos Gods. Fenris is thus at the forefront of the Imperium's defence against Chaos. The Space Wolves maintain the vigil that began many thousands of years ago at the close of the apocalyptic conflict known as the Horus Heresy. The planet of Fenris follows an extreme elliptical orbit around its pale sun. The Great Year, the period it takes Fenris to complete a single orbit, is approximately two Earth years long. For much of this long year, the world is remote from its sun and its surface remains bitterly cold. The icy oceans freeze over as Fenris draws away from its sun and at its farthest point even the equatorial seas are covered with ice. Towards the end of the year, as the planet sweeps close to the sun once more, the wolf's eye swells in the sky and a brief spring warms the surface of Fenris. During this period, the ice retreats to the poles and countless denizens of the deep waters emerge to enjoy the bounty of sun-spawned plankton and other short-lived oceanic life forms. As Fenris reaches its perihelion, the point at which it is closest to the sun, the massive gravitational pull begins to affect the planet. Aside from the rocky polar continent of Azerheim, the land masses of Fenris are unstable and the crust of the planet is thin. The passage of the planet close to its sun breaks and twists the delicate sub-oceanic crust exposing the molten core to the icy waters. With explosive violence, the world is torn asunder. Blazing islands rise from the sea, spewing fire and pouring lava down their slopes. Below the surface, the waters boil into steam, which engulfs Fenris with its sulfurous fumes. Great tidal waves scour the coasts of Azerheim, but the mighty rock stands fast, a single changeless land amongst a planet undergoing a savage metamorphosis. Elsewhere, islands created in the upheaval of preceding years are cast into turmoil. Some survive, but many are broken apart or swallowed by the sea, engulfed in the churning oceans, casting their inhabitants into the merciless deep. The native life forms of Fenris are used to the annual pattern of destruction and they have evolved ways of coping with the endless changing of their lands. Only on the polar continent of Azerheim are the animals protected to some degree from the extreme climate. Here, there are many unique creatures not able to live elsewhere on Fenris, including massive and ferocious bears, gigantic herbivores, and the great wolves of Fenris themselves. Yet Azerheim is remote, surrounded by cliffs tens of thousands of feet high that raise it above the seas and separate it from the oceans as one world from another. Azerheim provides no refuge for the creatures that live beyond its rocky confines. Most of the native life forms of Fenris are creatures which live in the sea. Many monstrous things inhabit the deep oceans, ancient and scaly beasts that battle for supremacy against others of their kind. Some are as large as islands and can consume a longship with a single swallow. Others are long and serpentine, creatures that the humans of Fenris call sea dragons. These will sometimes pluck a sailor from the deck of a ship and drag him to his death in the cold waters. Still others are too uncertain in form to describe accurately. 
many tentacled things with cold eyes like beacons that shine deep below. Such is the nature of most of the creatures that live upon Fenris. Yet even on this world, there are land-living creatures which brave the elements. Living upon the islands and hoping to survive the annual turmoil of their planet. Most hopeful of all are the native humans, the fierce men of Fenris. Although Fenris is the world of the Space Wolves, the Space Marine chapter occupies only the island continent of Azaheim, which rises from the polar oceans like a massive pillar. Sheer and forbidding, separated from the rest of Fenris by its tall cliffs. The remainder of Fenris is left in its wild and primitive state and the people survive as best they can amidst the endless seasons of ice and fire. The Space Wolves maintain a careful watch over their barbarous subjects but never appear openly amongst the warrior tribes. To the Fenrisians, the Space Wolves are the warriors of the gods, glimpsed only occasionally from afar, possessing powers magical and holy. The lands of Azaheim are the forbidden realms of the divine, where native legend forbids man to go. Only a warrior chosen by the gods can enter Azaheim, and only the best of the brave are ever chosen. The people of Fenris are barbarians, with no knowledge of advanced technology, nor of the world beyond their own troubled horizons. They are warriors, whose survival depends upon their skill with sword and spear. Because their world is almost entirely covered with water, they are the masters of the sea. They build mighty longships from the bone and hide of the sea monsters they hunt. In addition, they harvest some timber from lands old enough to grow mature trees. Fortunately, the vegetation of Fenris has evolved to grow quickly, and the volcanic sea soil of the new lands is rich and fertile. The Fenrisians endure a savage existence which often ends in battle against the monstrous creatures of the deep. The competition for food is great, and the tribes are often drawn into conflict over the planet's precious resources. The most valuable resource of all is land. No man knows how much the land will change at the turning of the year. Sometimes old islands survive the changing of the seasons, and good fortune may preserve a tribe's territory intact for many years. But it is more likely that they will be broken and destroyed, submerged beneath the oceans by the upheavals of Fenris's fragile crust. Many islands will be reduced or devastated so that only a few can live where before there were many. When this happens, there will be bloody war, and only those who succeed in finding new land and establishing themselves will survive. When the great year comes round and the pale sun of Fenris swells in the sky, whole populations take to the longships to escape the inundation of their islands. They must settle the newly formed lands quickly, for soon their supplies will run out and they will have to consume their stock animals and seed. If they can find no new land, they must fight to take the territories of other tribes. This continual migration results in constant bitter warfare, as each tribe attempts to take possession of and establish supremacy over the newly formed lands. It is from these hardy warriors that the Space Wolves recruit their kind taking only the best of the brave to become Space Marines worthy of the Emperor.